Good afternoon, folks, or good evening, and boys and girls. Uh, the boys and girls love that show. Yeah, I the bet. kids. Yeah. I'm sure they do. They flock around uh -huh. the TV and throw things at the TV when we're yeah. on. And but anyway, uh, welcome aboard. Uh, this is the run-up to the Super Bowl. Right. Yeah, a couple of days. Show. Just a few days away. And we're not going to goof around. Mr. Patterson. Okay. We're going right, right to, to the it. game. Uh, New England is two and a half point favorites over the Rams. Yeah, Patriots. I love the Patriots in this game. You do? I do. Help me too. Yeah, I do. But now uh, that said, you know, they got a, I think it's going to be a field goal game. I have a score. Do you have a score? Uh, I have a score. Oh, oh, you know what I was going to do? I was going to write down the over-under, but... It's 56 and a half. It's going to be under. Well, I have a score that will Go put ahead. it over. I have a score of New England 31, the Rams 27, which would be 58, which would actually pop it over. And would cover the two and a half and nicely. And would cover the two and a half. Um, I'll tell you what, I wasn't, I never think about predicting scores, but I will. Um, 28 to 13. 28 to 13. Yep. So that would be very much under. Yep. And I think Mr. Goff is going to see some, some things at quarterback that he hasn't seen before. Yeah. And I think there's going to be some points scored though. You do? Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, listen, uh, they both, they both got good offenses. Um, and you know that the Patriots are going to have a few wrinkles in there. They will. But the Rams are going to have a few wrinkles in there, too. They will. And, you know, it, you and know they've got some weapons, yep. and they can I make think, some plays. I think it's going to come down to the defense. Yeah. And uh, I like the Patriots' defense. Yeah. I, th I think the single biggest key is the Patriots' offensive line. If, if they play like they played in the first two playoff games and control the clock and the ball, and they run, and they got 150 yards rushing, and, you know, Brady's getting time. Do you know Joe Tooney has played every snap yeah. uh, of this season? Yeah. Do you also know that he can do a Rubik's Cube in 90 seconds? Is that right? He got a business degree in three years. And he's got a minor in something else, and now he's working on something else. Huh. And, and I, uh, they come to the Patriots, were interviewed, and they said, he's very smart. Sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like it. I just read an article where Trent Brown was talking about how much Tooney helped him when he came in here this year. Staying so up late, watching film, showing him how things you work. See, there was an article in the Herald, too, about Trent Brown. And... He said, um, I heard that it was a foul place and it was nasty and yeah. blah, blah. He said, these are great guys. Yeah. This is a great experience. He, he loves it the here. Great coaching. He said, I'm just having the time of my life. Yeah. Now, what else is he going to say? Probably. Right. But I think he was very effusive. And um, I'll tell you. Listen, he's been taken off the, not off the scrap heap, but he was a disappointment. He was a disappointment for uh, San Francisco, definitely. Yeah, and Dante Skarnakia yeah. got him. And Dante Skarnakia, maybe Bill Belichick's the greatest coach, but, uh, coach, but Skarnakia's got to be second. Uh, he's, he's awesome. I mean, he just does things with these people. So... He has, Trent Brown has been terrific. We all, th you know, we talked on this show about the hole at left tackle when Solder left. Did we ever? Which now looks like a great move. And this, this kid came in with the reputation of an underachiever and showed up overweight and they wanted to move That's him. That's Right? Yep. And he's been terrific. Yeah. He, he, and, he, so now he's an unrestricted free agent. Yeah. And uh, they and, also, the knock on him too was, Good pass blocker, poor run blocker. Right. Well, if anybody happens to notice the holes being yeah, open on the left been... side of the line, that's all done and over with. Yeah. Um, I and mean, when you think about this team and, and they're playing the Super Bowl, 
and think about the question marks coming in. Left tackle. I mean, left tackle. Uh, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Uh, right? Yeah. And he's not only filled the hole, he's been terrific. Terrific is probably an understatement. Right? Yeah. I think Pro Bowl caliber. Oh, easily. You know? Yep. So, because take a look at the team, you know, and what they've accomplished. And I think, you know, it's, it's important that they be the best players that go to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. But you got to take a look at the team. He's Pro too. Bowl caliber. Amen. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What, what are you going to do with him? Yeah. Are you going to sign him or are you going to let him go? I mean, some pe people are going to come in and offer that kid they may $12 million a year. They may franchise him. They could franchise him. Yeah. It's probably pretty expensive, but it's, they could franchise yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, do you that's know? A, that's assuming they don't use that for Trey Flowers. Because yeah. he's the other one. Yeah. And people at Trey Flowers' position are getting 15, 16. <sighs> well, you know what's scary? So he'd probably be considered not quite that, but then, yeah. but then you're talking 12 to 14 for Trey Flowers. Yeah. They may work out a deal with Brown, uh, maybe eight to nine mil a year. Um, you know, give him a three year. Meanwhile, guarantee. the phone's going to be ringing and people are going to be talking 12 million. Yeah. Yep. yep. Can't, you know, what's the kid going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been great here, but they were offering me got, a lot more someplace else. Yeah. So we got the number one pick from last year who got hurt. Yep. Towards Achilles. Right? That's right. Yeah. You know, um, uh, oh, Jeepers. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, but anywho, uh, oh, yeah, I remember. Brady's number for next year, mm -hmm. 27 million. Right, because it's the last year. Yeah. That's the cap. They've been deferring this. Right. Now, are they going to extend him and play some games with that? Or? Well, I, yeah, I think they are. Yeah. I think they are. As, as much to manage the cap as anything else, to give a little bit of money. I mean, they did that whole deal this year for these, this alleged $5 million of incentives. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think he's getting any of them. Yeah. Right? Right. Bob Kraft said in the paper yeah. uh, this morning that uh, uh, Brady's going to be extended. Yeah. So I think they're talking about it. Yeah, then that 27 number comes down. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've solved that. Now, so... Um, what kind of a game do you think this is going to be? Um, is it going to be a wild shootout, or is it going to be conservatively played? I don't think it's going to be conservatively played. But I don't think it's going to be conservatively played either, but I don't, I don't know that it's going to be a wild shootout, a 44-41 yeah. game or something like that. Will the Patriots go out and try to establish the run? Absolutely, yeah, they'll try first. to establish yeah. the run. Yeah. Because the Rams, you know, if you can pop, if you can get by Donald and Sue and uh, Flowers, is it Flowers? Who's the other guy on the, the guy they traded for? Yeah. Jacksonville. I think it's Flowers. Uh, get through the defensive line and get into the back seven, you can really run on them because they're, you know, they're thin. They've been playing seven, eight defensive backs because they've yeah. got injuries at linebacker. Yeah. Those guys go, are out for the year. Yeah, it would be nice if we could so, open up some holes. You know, and in the first two games, there have been monster holes to run through. The kind I mean, you could run the Caterpillar diesel through. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's going to come down, I think, to when it comes to the blocking, right? They, you, you gotta, they're going to have to double-team Donald on every play, mm -hmm. right? So there's two offensive linemen on him. Gronk is going to have to uh, Gronk is going to have to pitch really it. pitch it. Yeah. Because you... I don't know if you got a double sue on every play, but oh you, you boy, know, you can't let him run loose. When you're when you're running, as opposed to pass protection, you might have to double sue as well, and that's where Gronk will really come in. Yeah, I think is opening up that running game. Um, I, I I really like the Pats defense. I like what they did to Kansas City. Yeah, and uh, boy, a, a repeat of that, I would make me a very happy boy. Yeah, but the Rams, you know. They they can make plays and you know the what they did to Kansas City yes but then look at the second half of that game uh, Kansas City really got it going right so you know um well yeah but you're talking about the Patriots yeah. Kansas City yeah but uh, don't you think the Patriots uh, took the foot off the gas about uh, uh, going into the fourth quarter. 
and just said, look, tick tock, let's watch the clock. Let them run. Yeah, they let might them... have a little bit. I, I, I don't know. Maybe well, a I little think they bit. lost a sense of urgency. I really yeah. do. I and, mean, they came out so strong. And in retrospect, you know, to overcome that turnover when they're at the one yard line. Yeah. Overcome that and still win, and win. that yeah. road game. Character. I mean, it looked like we were, you know, looking at 14 nothing. I think Romo that was, said something that was a huge to that effect, too. Play. That the score at the end of the game was not indicative of the way the Patriots dominated Kansas yeah. City. Had some turnovers. Yeah. Had one called back, thank goodness. Now, I have got a couple of other questions for you. I mean, so to your point, I think, yep. you know, I, I like the defense, too. But... You know, I think the Rams have a very good offense, and, you know, I think they're going to put some points up. I really do. Yeah. Um, now, Gronk. Yeah. Um, He'll be back next year. Do you feel that way, too? I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was, he, lay, he, he actually lowered his guard uh, in that interview this week. And really talk from the heart yeah. about what it's like to be a player and your comrades. And, you know, it's like guys have been in combat. Yes. And yeah. uh, we went through hell together, you know. Yeah. And there's a bond uh, that forms that will never break, you right. know. And he was talking about that. And he talked about it very sincerely. He wasn't clowning around. I think he'll be back, too. Yeah, I think he'll... I think he's going to go year to year. Yep. See yep. how it goes. As long as he doesn't get hurt. If in this he has game, another big injury, yep. then that that'll probably be it. In fact, I will go and see him and tell him it's time to retire. I mean, on opening day next year, he'll be thirty. By the way, uh, Tommy Nobus, that was a linebacker for Atlanta way back. Yep. Um. Well, finally, uh, was, it was disclosed that he had a tremendous case of that. CT? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just really bad. Mm. And his wife revealed that when he got up in the morning, and depending upon how he was acting, she would call the office where I guess he worked after he retired and tell them he was coming. And watch out for him. He's bad today. Or he seems mellow today hmm. or whatever. But th he was horrible. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It is a bad thing. You know. Um, two active NBA players have scored more than 1,000 points against the Celtics. Who are they? Two active NBA players. Uh, I'm thinking, of, I don't know. Is Vince Carter still playing? Is he one of them? Yeah. He's been around forever. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to think of who, <laughs> who were the high 30s players that were actually good. Well, they were in their division and played the. Yeah. Who's the other one? LeBron. Oh, LeBron, of course. Yeah. Duh. Yeah, okay. I, I, you know, when they ask that question on TV, I said, LeBron, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out yeah. who the other one was. But guess what? It was the game after we had seen Vince Carter yeah, in Boston still hobbling around. I can't believe he's still playing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, now, here's something near and dear to your heart. I want to know how you can handle us. Okay. Uh, Senator Warren. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is floating a plan out that she wants to leave it, levy a 2% annual tax on assets over $50 million. Now, that means you're going to have to hide a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'll no, have to get, yeah. Maybe you better sit down with Gale tonight after <laughs> supper. Got to go offshore. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is calling for a 70% income tax. Yes. Um, Reminiscent of the pre-Reagan days. Yeah, we have a lot of things to worry about with this bunch. And do you realize something? 
there are 2.7 billion active members of Facebook. 2.7 billion? Billion. Billion. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. And they're spying on all of them. Yeah. <laughs> this is really something, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, well, now, since you got half the question, I'm going to give you the prize. Oh, really? Yep. And the prize is a handy little pocket a, calendar. A pocket calendar. Wow. Yep. Simpler times. I'm telling you, that's it. Yeah. Ah, uh, very good. Thank I got you. a package of crap from those people. They put about fifteen things in an envelope and sent it to me and said, um, "Send us six bucks or something." Yeah, uh, I didn't do it. But anyhow, um, so tell me something. Um, the key player of the game for the Patriots will be. Um, that's an interesting question. I mean, Tom Brady, right? Is mm -hmm. the obvious choice, mm. really. So let's say so other, other than, than Brady. Tom Brady. Uh, I'm going to go with Edelman. Yep. That's exactly who I honed in on, yeah. to Edelman. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? He also could run a punt back 75 yards, right. too. So the real question is if everything goes as we. Hope it will. Who will be the standout defensive player for the team? I think the aforementioned Trey Flowers yeah. will be in that mix somehow. Yeah. Um, he has just uh, had such an even year at a high level. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be Trey Flowers, too, but uh, I also, and I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> I, I can't, based on things I've said on this show in the last two yeah. years about this guy, Kyle Van Noy, who has played terrific in the first two games. I mean, just unbelievable. Even down the side, you know, coverage down the sideline. But I agree with you. Yeah. Now, I can't believe how good he's playing. I've liked uh, Van Noy all along. Yeah. Uh, when they got him off waivers, and uh, they had him on special teams there when they first brought him over. Yeah. You know, he was... Uh, they actually traded for him. Yeah. 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 Was, was that a trade? That was a trade. Oh, he, okay. With Detroit. Yeah. And he was he was a second-round pick, a yeah. relatively high second-round pick, yeah. you know, middle of the yeah. pack, right? They, uh, what was it, a fourth or fifth rounder? Yeah, they... Um, we gave them a fifth rounder, and they gave us a. It was either a late sixth or an early seventh. It was. Four, it ended up being forty-two places. So we slipped forty-two places in the sixth or seventh round. You know that's not a big price to pay no. for somebody that's playing no. the kind of football he's playing. By the way, off the field. A great guy. Good guy, it looks like, yeah. Great human being. Yeah. yeah. He and his wife are involved right up to their eyeballs with foster children. Hmm. Uh, I believe he was a foster child. Oh, really? I think uh, It seems to me. But, well, he's, uh, they, been, he's been unbelievable. Yeah, they devote a lot of time to uh, their work with foster children. Yeah, I take my hat off to people like that. Yeah. I really do. It's mar they're marvelous people. Um, any thoughts on... Uh, who will be a stick out on the other team, the Rams? Well, you know, you kind of think about assuming they're all healthy, right? Yeah, people always talk about Belichick will take away your top threat. So who is that? Is it Brandon Cooks or is it Todd Gurley? I think it's Todd Gurley. I, but a, they better not wink on Brandon I, Cooks. Right. So Cooks, you know... You got to have safety help back there, yeah, for Cooks, right? Unless you just, unless they're going to just take Gilmore, well, and stick him on Cooks and say, okay, you got Cooks, we got everybody else. Do you know else. if there's enough drop off to their second receiver, they may do that. Yeah, because Cooks is that good, and so is Gilmore. Right. 
to you. As long as you bring safety over on deep patents or something like that. So, you know. And by the way, Brandon Cooks was very articulate in his interview, too. Mm -hmm. uh, he thanked the Patriots for yeah. the year that he was here. He received great coaching. He said, I really found out how the Patriots do things. And, uh, and then he got the big bucks. What's there not to be happy what about? What is there not to be happy about, <laughs> you know? It's like doing a year as an apprentice and then yeah. getting a job right at the top of the heap. Yeah. I mean, how can you not like that? And then you get to tell your grandchildren you played with Tom Brady. You know, there's a lot of that, that to be said for that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was a Patriot. I know? played with Tom Brady. But for the Patriots are despised through the rest of the country. Yeah. But that will mellow with time. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. I know. Uh, Too bad. I, I, I worked for a guy down in North Carolina, an uh, Auden sports fan. And uh, when the Patriots won the Super Bowl in 204, yeah. I sent him a Patriots hat. And I understand he destroyed it. And threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> but in uh. any Well, so. Um, one of the things I've been thinking of um, is, I'm thinking ahead, but next year, what are the odds the Patriots will draft a quarterback? Not in the first round, mind you. He'll look for a value quarterback. But, yeah. But in the first three rounds. Well, you know, it's, it's not supposed to be a good draft for quarterbacks, um, but from what I was, can read, it, you know, there are going to be like those second, third round, fourth round guys who are projects. mostly seen as A, projects, and B, you know, maybe they'll be backup quarterbacks, right? What they pay backup quarterbacks these days, that's all right. And, you know, can you find a gem? Can you find a, the Russell Wilson, right? Wasn't mm -hmm. he a fourth round pick? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, look what he does with defensive backs. Oh, well, he's a walk-on. I'll take yeah. him, and he's undrafted. I'll take him, and yeah. yeah, now they're starting on a Super Bowl team. That'll be interesting, Yeah, uh, you know, to see what they do. Uh, if the, well, because you know what? Even talking about this stuff is crazy because he's the smartest guy that I think has ever coached or been a general manager in football. And for us to sit here and say, well, you know, I think he'll do this or do that. Yeah. He, he knows what he wants to but do. But you know what he wants in a quarterback is what he wants in every single position on the field is to come in, play our system. We're going to tell you what, your job, you know, what we want you to do and go do it. Don't freelance. Don't, you know, mm. Jamie Collins it, right? We, See that sign up on the right. wall? Do your job. Do your job job that's it and you know he went 11 and 5 with matt castle because matt castle adhered to that that's right matt castle wasn't a great quarterback hell no he didn't even wasn't even a starter in college right but, and that's right. but yet he came in agreed to play its role and did it and he did it and they went 11 and 5 and then he got a good contract and then he got a good contract and stayed in football for i don't know how many years and like most of the patriots he ended up being overpaid for yeah. another team. Yeah, that's not, right. Not overpaid in Foxborough. Hello, Jimmy Garoppolo. Just like to this point, Jimmy <laughs> Garoppolo is overpaid. We'll see how it goes. Yes. So far, he's overpaid. Now, that I still like that rumor from last summer that when Bailey uh, Brady <laughs> falters, He's going to go knocking on Indy's door looking for Jacoby Brissett. Well, I, since you said that, I saw another article that indicated that Brissett wants, you know, he's, it's a friendly thing. He's, he's being diplomatic about it, but he wants to have a chance. Mm -hmm. And he wants to move on from Indy. Yeah. Well, I'll go blame. somewhere where he'll get, I mean, Andrew Luck's come back and been terrific. Yes, he right? has. Yeah. yeah. Andrew Luck had a great year. Yeah. So he wants to move on. But it's not here as long as Brady's around, no, right? So no. I don't unless, know where it would be. Unless he's willing to come here for another year of tuning up behind Brady. Yeah. And 
Uh, you don't know. But Brady's all over this week saying, I'm playing till 45. Steve, how long did Steve Young sit on the bench and back up Montana? Yeah, it was a while. Well, it was a while. I, I don't think he got in until he was, what, 28 or 29? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there well, there's other teams that we have in Boston. Yes. And I don't know whether you... Um, I follow them all to... To one degree or another? Yes. Uh, did you happen to uh, watch the Celtics last night? Uh, I watched some of the game. I didn't see the whole thing, but I well, watched some It was of a it. bloodbath. I yeah, mean. yeah. But, I mean, it looked like the Celtics were playing King Philip High School. I turned it off in the third quarter, actually. Yeah. Yeah, when they went up 33 yeah. or something like yeah. that. Um, but the Celtics played hard for 8 or 10 or 12 minutes. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, if you guys ever played like that, of course, they were playing Carolina. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, other than a couple of players, looks absolutely yeah. in a quandary out there. But the Celtics, um, Jalen Brown, um, I thought, played extremely well last night. Yeah. Um, and Terry Rosier. Mm -hmm. Now, my son, Patrick, always stats on me. Dad, Rosie is gone. Yes, I you agree. You cannot keep him. Assuming you keep Kyrie. Assuming Kyrie it, stays, Rosie is going to go. I, I, I just like, like Rosie. Yeah, I like Rosie too. And, um, Danny, and Danny Ainge likes Rosie. Yeah. He does. And I'll tell you what, won't break my heart if they keep the lad and figure something out. But he is, as I was reading something, uh, an article online about him, and, you know, people are saying he's going to be a $20 million a year player. And that's why I want to hold on to him. Right, but you can't really afford to pay him $20 million here. Mm -hmm. Assuming Kyrie comes back. Assuming, yeah. Assuming, you know. Kyrie gets hurt all the bloody time. What you do oh. with Al Horford, right? Yep. Depends what you do with Al Horford. Al Horford's got it. One year, he's got an option for next year at $31 million. Al Horford is a very decent basketball player. Right. Um, he not, is... Not a max contract guy. Though. No, not a max contract guy. Which is what he has. That's right. Yep. Um, but um, he's a great teammate. He works well with the young guys. And uh, when he's in there, he works hard. And he lets the offense yep. rotate around him. No, he's a, he's a big part of the team. But the thing is, you know, the way the NBA kind of works, you can have, you can basically have three max guys. Mm -hmm. And then other guys, right? So... And that's the problem, I think, with the Celtics. The quantity for Danny is, he's, as he looks forward, you could get three of them. But... Well, Kyrie. You've, right, so Kyrie's one. Uh, Hayward is two. And, to, you know, and he's certainly not playing at that level. Yep. And then you got Horford. Now, Horford's in his last year, so... And then you got the two youngsters. Jalen Brown. Yeah. And... Um, the kid and Tatum. Tatum, yeah. Right. And by the way, uh, last couple of games, um, Tatum has obviously been taking his vitamins. Yeah. Because he has become very assertive. Right. And he is uh, driving to the hoop like the old Tommy Heinsohn did when he was a rookie. Just watch out, because I'm driving to the hoop. So, you know, if you're New Orleans... And you're willing to trade Anthony Davis here. And the talk is that Danny would, is willing to do a similar thing like he did with KG, is go get him even though he only has one year left and bring him in. Now, um, you know, if you're the general manager in New Orleans, Jason Tatum has to be part of that deal. Oh, he's got to be. He has to be. He's got to be. It, the right. Jalen Brown is not going to get it done. Right. It's not Jalen Brown. You know, and... It may be Jason, and it may be Terry Rozier on a on a sign and trade because he's a restricted free agent after this season. No, Anthony Davis was fined fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, for saying what he said. 
Right. Wanting the trade, you can't do that. Right. Um, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care. What's 50000 bucks to him? Clearly out there. Let the games begin. Yeah, and so Danny's better positioned than anybody in terms of putting pieces in a package. And if Davis has his head on straight, yeah, he's going to realize I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to wait till the off season because I can't do anything now. The, uh, they cannot consummate a deal now. Right. The Celtics. They've got to wait. So it's going to be this summer. But I think he wants to go to the Lakers. He just he bought a seven and a half million dollar house in L.A. last summer. Oh, then the Laker deal may get done before the fourteen days or whatever it is. And that's the thing. For, but that's the thing for New Orleans is who can put the better package together. So you know, yeah, they can give you Alonzo Ball and Kuzma and their pick, which isn't going to be a high pick. It's going to be a middle of the pack mm. pick. I mean. But Daddy Ball comes along. But if you got a, somebody over here is, who's actually willing to put Jason Tatum into the deal, willing to give you the Memphis pick, which is has the possibility of being a likely 2021 pick, but it will be unprotected in 2021. And Memphis stinks. They're, they're going to start a rebuild. They can't attract free agents to Memphis, you know? So... That 2021 pick, it could be the number one pick in the draft. Have you been to Memphis? Um, no. Not a pretty city. No, I have not. The west side of Memphis uh, towards the river is... Uh, really? Yeah, That's it's real, real dump. That's what I've heard. Um, no, I, we go to Nashville. Where we go? There you go. Tennessee. Now, I've no, I, I was to Nashville... Um, I had a possible distributor there, and uh, um, I forget where the hell else I was. But I drove to Nashville, uh, found him. It was easy finding him. He was on the south side of the city. Ah. Spent a couple hours with him. Wasn't going to work out. And then I kept on going. So ah. my time in Nashville was about two hours. Wow. Should have gone to South Broadway. Yeah. That's where all the action is. <laughs> I, some live music in every establishment. Yeah. Yeah, I like New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, all right. So, so anyway, I don't know what the Celtics are going to do, but uh, something something big is going to happen. It's not going to happen until the next summer, though. No, I think you're right. Um, would they include Kyrie in this deal? Well, that's the thing. Does Kyrie want to go? You know, will, just, will he go? Yeah. Just driving home tonight, I heard that. There's supposedly a deal in place that the Knicks are trading Porzingis to Dallas. And the speculation is already coming out of New York that the reason they're doing that is because they're going to end up getting Durant this offseason. Because Durant will opt out like he opts out every year. And they're going to get Durant, and that raises the question of Kyrie. Despite what he said, that he's going to stay in Boston... He hasn't signed anything yet, and he, like Bill Parcells, will say he has the right to change his mind. As Bill Parcells told us at one point, I reserve the right to change my mind. There you <laughs> are. And Kyrie Irving reserves the right to change his mind, and if Kevin Durant's going to end up on the Knicks, you know, suppose, you know he, he grew up in New Jersey, he grew up a Knicks fan, Kyrie Irving... The Knicks have never been good in Kyrie Irving's life. He's 25, right? Think about the Knicks. They've, they've stunk for the last 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a playoff appearance here and there. But compared to the Knicks, we remember from the 70s when they won championships. All the New 50s. And New York was a basketball, was the basketball mecca. Yeah. Right? The old garden. And so if Durant is going there. Is it and by the way... Durant's uh, not going unless he's got something up his sleeve. Yeah. He uh, could it be Kyrie Irving. He looked mighty good the other night, Durant. He hasn't lost a thing. And and if if you are Danny Ainge and you have your sources and you hear things that other people and you become convinced that this is actually gonna happen, that Durant is going to go to the Knicks and he's gonna come to Kyrie and say, Come play with me because 
they already got rid of Porzingis, so they'd be able to get Kyrie and somebody else. Mm-hmm. Clay Thompson. Whoever. Yep. Right? And if you're Danny and you are convinced that that's going to happen, do you try to trade Kyrie before the trade deadline? I mean, trade him like now. Yes. Right? Uh, well, I think you have to. If you become convinced that he's not yeah. going to sign here, he's going to pull the rug out from yeah. under us. Now, and he's going to go play with Kevin Durant. Is he the with kind the of guy that if um, Danny called him in and said, Now, listen, level with me. Are you gone? Have you changed your mind about signing with us? Is, is Kyrie the kind of guy, stand up guy, that would tell Danny the truth? I don't know. You know, the story of the last 24 hours is that, is the other story with Kyrie is that he, he and LeBron are, have patched things up. Kissing and making up. Kissing and make, have kissed and made up. And that LeBron wants him to come play for the Lakers next year. Of course. Year. Right? And so in that scenario, LeBron's sitting there thinking, we get Anthony Davis who wants to come here. I get Ky- We got LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Kyrie Irving. Bring it on, Golden State. I wonder how that mix would go down. And then Durant says, screw that. I'm out of here. I'm going to New York, back to the East Coast. And all of a sudden, the Lakers are the dominant team. They're a championship caliber team, depending what they give up, right? So then Danny sits Pat. If they could somehow figure out how to keep Kuzma and still get Anthony Davis... They'd be. And get Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, Hmm. and Anthony Davis playing for the Lakers. Oh. You know. Gives me the willies. If Danny goes off the deep end for Anthony Davis. Yeah. And strips the team. I, I. it's it's a tough one. So I don't want him to do Everybody just takes for granted that Anthony Davis is a transformational player. He's one he's a top 5. You got So, I know it's a sad situation down there, but if you're that transformational, how come you never make the playoffs? How come that team hasn't made the playoffs? Let me tell you either? something. I've watched Anthony Davis in games. Right. All right, I'm not thrilled. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't send chills up my spine. Well, he's good. I mean, he's good. Listen, the guy's averaging like he twenty-eight, he twelve. Is. He's he's a good defensive player. He gets defense, you know, second team defense or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, he gets recognized for his defense too. You know, I mean, he is a premier talent. But at the same time, is he really that Larry Bird type? Mm-hmm. Because but those only come along once know, in a lifetime. But those players, if you put them on a team with bunch of you know NBA caliber players don't you make the playoffs and the, and New Orleans never makes the playoffs yeah with no. Anthony Davis right you know what that's got to be a tough place to play yeah because there is so much off the court of interest yes there is uh, down there um, so much fun to be had for a young guy who has you know young Single 20, 21 year old guy who's got a ton of money in his a pocket. A ton of money in his pocket and yeah. is willing to spend it. Yeah. Looking for some fun. He can find it in the Big Easy, let me tell you. I'm sure they do. Plus. Now they probably find it everywhere, I'm sure. Yeah. Kelly Olenix found it in Miami too, but. <laughs> Kelly's not doing well down there, is he? I don't know. I think he's a, he's a bench player. He's an overpaid bench player. I'm not, I don't even know if he's really overpaid anymore. What did they sign him? 12 and a half? Something like that, hmm. yeah. Um, Marcus got 13. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you know, like you, I've always liked Marcus. I, I, not as much as you. Yeah. But I got to tell you, he is a warrior. He is a warrior. Oh, my <laughs> God. I love him. This year, uh, you know, he's a warrior, but a little bit more controlled warrior. Yeah. But he is so tough. Yeah. Man. And he can, he can leg- you know, on switches and stuff, he can legitimately guard big guys. 
He can. You know, the 6'10 guy. Yeah. He's strong. He can muscle Jim him out. Luskatov. Yeah. Was only 6'5. Yeah. Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim. Yeah. But boy, he could handle the big guys because he used to take them and just shove them out of the paint. Yep. By the way, um, uh, you know, in, in thinking about the way basketball has changed, um, Scal had a very interesting comment the other night when he said, you know, uh, Tom Thibodeau is going to have a tough time finding a job because he's a defensive coach. Yeah. And now, in the league now, it is a no-touch league. Yeah. And um, he, he's, he's uh, obsolete. Yeah. All they want to do is offense and threes. Yeah. Uh, no touching. Sweet. Tweet. Yep. Two shots, you know, uh, if you might just look at the other guy. With that said and done, what happened last night? They put the whistle away and let them play. Yeah. There was plenty of contact out there. Yeah, there was. I, from what I saw, I, I noticed that. I expected whistles on a number of a couple of times went, oh, well, on hits and fouls that weren't called. I love it. I wish they'd, play, they'd call yeah. it that way every night. Yep. And then uh, the little lady there, uh, evidently, well, the, the, uh, the uh, referee had enough, and she started blowing the whistle like, yeah, um, perhaps worrying it was going to get out of hand or something or, or whatever. It's a tough game to call. It's an impossible it's a, game. A really to call. tough game. They to change call. the damn rules every single bloody night. Right. I just, oh boy. Yeah. And then we have. But that's why players who can actually play defense under those rules are very valuable. Oh. When you get to the playoffs, especially. Yeah. Oh, no, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. You're 100% right. Right. And uh, Marcus is one of those guys. Marcus is one of those guys. Dennis Johnson was another one. Yes, he was. Rep, yeah. God rest his soul. The other thing about Marcus that's I've uh, is his shooting. His shooting is much better. He's like a thirty-eight percent three-pointer now. I know they, they keep they keep in track of it that's on a, TV. That's a good number, though. I mean, when you look at three-point shooting uh, percentages, you get over forty. If you, that's well, if you get you to four, if you're forty, you're you're considered to be a very good yeah. three-point yeah. shooter. But he's at thirty-eight percent this year. He was at what they say, like 28 or 29 last year? Mm -hmm. And his two-point shooting is better, too. And his free throw shooting is better. So, I mean, Marcus... Is learning to be a player. Yeah. Is developing into a player. Yeah. Yeah. And he's playing for a second contract. He signed it. Yeah, oh, all right, his third contract. Right. And he's... So they uh, signed him... He's because signed he's now continuing to improve. three more years, I yeah. think. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm swung over to your side on him. Yeah. I mean, he's just the kind of guy that if you can get those, you know, franchise-type players, those re legitimate max contract guys, and then you've got a, you know, a Marcus Smart there to bring that grit, that's, that's dynamite. Tony, um, who was the, the guy the Celtics had uh, that went down to Memphis, Tony. Um, oh, um, yeah, the defensive guy. Yeah, yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah, uh, he was another. He was an earlier version of Marcus. Yeah, um, tough. But he didn't bring anything offensive. No, no. Yeah, but toughness. I mean, if Marcus is going to sit out there and hit thirty-eight percent on threes. Mm -hmm. That takes him as a player to a whole nother level. Yep. But by the same token, if I were Danny, I'd sit Marcus down and say, no, Marcus, I love you, but I don't love your passing. Yeah, uh, he has his ups and downs. Boy, but. I'll tell you, uh, he threw two cross-court passes last night that, it, you know, I go, oh, my God. I didn't believe it. You know, both of them intercepted. I mean, jeepers, creepers. Um, so the question would be, you know, if you had a deal for Davis and you had to include either, and you could keep the other one, you had to include either Rozier or Smart, which one would you include? I probably Smart, but 
Because I think Rosia has got a tremendous upside. See, I would, I would keep smart and include Rosia. Look, by the way. Because I think Rosia is more replaceable. Yeah, you can find shooters. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, Celtics have a lot of picks. This year is supposed to be a great guard and wing draft. Mm -hmm. They're going to have, you know, hopefully they're not, it looks like they're not going to get the Memphis pick, which is good. They're going to get the Sacramento pick, which right now is at a 13, 12 mm -hmm. or 13. Uh, that should be that, a usable should, player. Yeah, they'll probably get the Clippers pick. I mean, I think Danny wishes he they could defer all these. but mm -hmm. Yeah, so, he's got loaded roster right now. But in this draft, if at 13 or 12, yeah. there's guards. There might, might be a player that can so, play. Or should be a player that can play. And there's a lot of, supposedly a lot of great shooters. So, I mean, who can you replace? Easier. Rozier? Yeah. Or who can, you know, unless there's a guy you think brings you what Marcus Smart brings you. Well, I think they, don't, just, they don't exactly grow on trees. No, I think you can replace Rozier easy, easier. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. I'm yeah. going to let Danny handle that. Yeah. I have faith in Danny. Yeah. You know, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes things don't happen as quickly as we may like. He's got patience. He does have patience. He and absolutely he, has patience. And he's got good ownership. Yes. Yeah, so we'll see. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, then there's the other folks that play in TD North <laughs> Garden. Yeah. The Bruins. Yeah. I don't know if you've been watching them, but uh, yeah, they have their moments where they look like a Chinese fire drill out there. They do. Uh, they don't. They're not cohesive. Um, everyone says, any of the hockey guys, especially some of my friends that are real hockey guys, you know, Cassidy's doing a good job, but it's like anything else, you know, if you don't have the horses. Yeah, he doesn't have the horses. No, he doesn't. He's got mixes and matches all over the place. And you know Donato um, is back down in yeah. Providence. I mean, they've been rotating all of them. Now they, there's Trent Fredericks up, got in a fight the other night, kicked the crap out of the guy. <laughs> yeah, you want to be popular in Boston instantly. Whoa. Yeah, You're an instant legend yeah. when you do that, yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, he took that guy apart. But he really did. He landed some good punches and then ended up taking them down. So, you know, the problem is... You know, they, they got all this young talent, and they're skating a lot of these kids. They're rotating them in and out with Providence. Um, but none of them can finish. You know, and they're young. They can skate. The only one who, of course, has done anything is DeBrusque. Well, and right? Bre Brandon Carlo, too. And Brandon Carlo. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. agree with Brandon he's, Carlo. He's really uh, had a solid But I'm yeah. thinking, of, uh, you know, the, the well, the, forwards. Oh, the, the forwards, yeah, DeBrusque's yeah. the only I one. Mean, all these guys that they had. I know the kid from Notre Dame got hurt. Bjork, right? He got hurt. Yep. His shoulder. He's, he's out. for the, till next and, year. And, you know, JFK. And then yep. this kid, Frederick. Supposedly they really like this kid, Frederick. He's, yep. only, he's only 21 yep. or something. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And he's still filling those. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but they need, this team desperately needs one of these kids. To, you know, they, need, they needed one of these kids to be sitting here at this point of the year with like 11 goals. That's right. That's exactly right. And they, they haven't gotten it. From, they haven't gotten it. Uh, they, they, they've got DeBrusque, but that's it. Right. So. Um, um, and by the uh, way. Is it, who's got five? Is it Achari? Somebody's got five. But that's it. I mean, so when a, you look at the team scoring, yeah, you got the top line, and they've got a great power play, right? They're, they're second in the league on the power play. Yeah, and they're also... And nobody else can score. They were also leading the league in least goals. Yeah. Yeah. So... Well, that's interesting because, you know, so the the young kids who had to be called up who weren't supposed to be called up when they got decimated yep. def defensively, they were actually pretty good. Yep. But the forwards, I think, have been... To me, a disappointment. I thought there was going to be, you know, big, big disappointment. One guy with, you know, like maybe eleven. Somebody else with eight. Mm -hmm. And they they can't decide what the devil to do with the second line. Right. Who do we put there? You know. And then they. Uh, 
They need, you know. They, they, then they start doing stupid things, in my estimation. Well, let's take the brusk and put them over on the right side. Right. Oh, yeah, that's just what you want to do with a kid yeah. uh, just up. Let's take him and put him on his off wing. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense, you know. Cheapest, creepers. Well, you know, they need a top six forward. They there's do. A, there's a, a cup. There's some available. Yep. You're gonna have to pay for them. That's the problem. Every and single I, one of them is gonna need a first round yep. pick and a player. That's right. And the temptation's gonna be there to move a Grizzlick. Oh, heaven forbid, Carlo. Yep. Um, yep. You know. Well, we gotta do something. We gotta give something to get something. Well, if you keep up that attitude. All you're going to do is just decimate the defense end. And, right. oh, yeah, great, you'll have forwards, but, oh, jeepers. Um, they haven't drafted well at all. No, I mean, they had those three consecutive picks. Yep. DeBrusque was one of them. Yep. Right? But the other two? Have not. Panda, Lazon. Right. Now, Lazon was up, and he didn't look out of place for three games. Yeah. Uh, he's back down to Providence. I haven't gone down to Providence this year. I probably won't be. Five. Five. So, I don't know. Now they're all still young? Well, That's we'll... right. And that is what they stayed the course. Don't go trading right. Grizzlick and a number two for a washed up winger. Right. Because if you get, and even if you get a decent one, like that guy from Philly, or, you know, there's a couple yeah. of names being yeah. floated yeah. around. When if you did that trade, are you beating Tampa Bay in the playoffs? Hell I don't think no. so. Right? Are you going to beat Toronto? Probably not going to beat I, Toronto. I don't think so. Yeah. No. So, it, you know, every trade I've seen, it's you got a first round pick. You got you got to send a first round pick yep. and and a player. A player. Yeah. And, and and what does it get you? I mean, I know you talk about Simmons, Wayne Simmons for yeah. Philadelphia. Oh, that's great. All right, so we'll send down, oh, not a number one, and we'll send him down a number two in Matt Grizzlock. Okay, and Simmons comes up and plays 14 games for us and signs a contract with right. uh, St. Louis Blues. Yeah, because we're not going to pay him with the Blues. a couple for. guys out there, I think, who are actually you'd get this year and next year, but... Yeah, it's kind of like, what do you do? I mean, do you think you can really get out of your conference even after you make that trade? No, Tampa Bay so. is a tough, tough team. And the Maple Leafs are getting better. Yeah. Now, they picked up a defenseman. Now they're all weak there. Yeah. Um, and I still think that uh, their goaltending is probably maybe not Stanley Cup quality. But, yeah. Uh, but Nylander is, is getting himself in shape now. And... Uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, the forwards. Oh. Now, Kadri has not played fantastically. The, I guess he's played okay, but he hasn't had a lot of scoring. But he's a tough nut, and uh, he'll get going. Yeah, yeah, uh, they're, they're loaded up front. Yeah, I like uh, watching Toronto. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, they're fun. I watch them on the NHL network mm -hmm. when they're on. I, even if the Bruins are on, I'll watch Toronto. But now, there, um, I just, you know what? We get a lot of Red Sox stuff here, but I just got to ask you something uh, that I think I left on top, but uh, let's see if I can find it relatively quickly here. But that was the Hall of Fame voting. The Hall of Fame voting, yeah. Um, now, what did you think of it? I hear this right here. Um, and, and all right, well, well, let me, <laughs> all right, let me put it a different way. Um, Mariano Rivera. I'm, I'm good with him going in. Is, he should have been unanimous choice five times over. Yeah. I mean, he was the dominant he was reliever dominant. Yeah. of his time. Um, no problem there. None at all. Uh, now. I do have some issues with it, though. Uh, Roy Holiday. Yeah. He's a competitor. He yeah. was a bulldog. 203 and 105. Right. He had arm trouble. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, he had some good seasons. 197, 22 and 7, 20 and 11, uh, 21 and 10, 19 and 6. Yep. But he ended up with a 3.83. 
earn more now. Three eight three. Yeah, and like two hundred and five wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, borderline. Borderline. I think so. Yeah. And the fact that he died in that plane crash, you got a lot of sympathy for. He did. Yeah. I I agree totally. Yep. If he's still alive. Uh, he wouldn't get in. Yeah, I no. think he's very borderline, and I think Messina's the same thing. Si exact same thing. Yeah. Now, Messina, 270 and 153. 3.68 earn run average. Yeah. 270 uh, is a pretty good number. It is. And he uh, he pitched uh, for, I think, better teams than um, Holiday may have. Yeah. But Musina, 18 and 5, 16 and 5, 19 and 9, 19 and 11, then a couple of bad years, but then 17 and 11, 18 and 10, 17 and 8, blah, blah, blah. And he finished up with 20 and 9 in his last year. Hmm. Went 20 his last year, huh? Yeah. Huh. So I think he would be borderline. 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 But so what you've got to ask yourself is the Hall of Fame is for the extraordinary player. Mm -hmm. Are these guys extraordinary players? No, they were good. And if they aren't, what the hell are they doing getting yeah. in? I, I don't, and, and I saved the best for last, Edgar Martinez. Yeah. I mean, look, if Edgar Martinez had been a left fielder, all right, and I guess uh, the reason he was a DH was he was not adept in the field. Right. Uh, so, if he was a left fielder with 309 home runs and a lifetime batting average of 312 and sub high defensively, hmm. he wouldn't be getting into the Hall of Fame. But because he's a DH, right? Somebody uh, that'll make Big Poppy happy. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah he was rooting for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now Big Poppy saying, "Well, now we'll get some more DHs coming in and." Wrap up. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, Mariano Rivera. No problem there. And maybe Musina, but the other two, yeah. forget about it. Yeah. That's it. All right. I'm not even well, sold. I'm not sold on Musina. By the I way, say he was good, but was he? He was good. Generational? No. No. Um, by the way, page eight here. I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, page eight. Let's take a look at uh, some of the guys that are in the Hall of Fame, okay? Lifetime, uh, with uh, earn run averages, 1.74, Pedro had in 2000. Louis Tiant, 1.91. Uh, Gaylord Perry, 1.92. Yeah. Um, well, my word, there's no 3.68s on that No, bunch. there isn't. By the way. When you were a kid, did you buy Baseball Digest? It used uh, to be smaller. Yeah. Yeah. It's still being published hmm. in big form. Huh. So what? Uh, there's some old stuff in here and some new stuff in here. Oh. And I need you to check that out. Wow. Okay. And if you tell me you like that, I'll subscribe to it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to subscribe to it for myself. Okay. But uh, if you say, boy, I, you know what, Bill? That's a, a dandy little thing, and you don't pay me on this damn show, so there you, go. you can afford to give me a book. There but, you go. All right, friends. Um, Patriots. Go Pats. Go Pats. They're going to win. And they're going to win? They're going to win. Absolutely right. Uh, the Celtics are going to continue to get a little bit better as time goes. The Bruins are probably going to go the other way, and mediocrity is going to slide in a little bit more. And we'll wait on the Red Sox. And the Red Sox still need some more bullpen. Oh, do they ever. Yeah. Haven't signed anybody yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, somebody said, well, they signed Pierce and they signed yeah. Avaldi. They had them both yes. last year. All right? They just kept them. That's all. On that note, folks. All right? Go out and be kind to each other. Stay warm. And we'll see you next time.